Hi there. Before we get started, I just wanted to let y'all know that I stream now, or at least I try to, uh, every week, uh, 4 p.m. Central Time on Wednesdays. Uh, you should see a notification on the channel, uh, just in case, you know, because certain time zones, all that kind of stuff. I just kind of play whatever I feel like, uh, so feel free to stop by and say hi. Uh, anyway, on to the video. Penumbra Overture is the first of its kind, in a sense. Perhaps there were games like it, uh, but they were before my time, and I can't really think of any on the top of my head. I don't know what other games are like Penumbra. Um, Scratches? Cryostasis? No, Condemned? Condemned's pretty good. Bioshock. Phantasmagoria? Huh. The year? It was 2007. And, newly founded Frictional Games had just made their first game, Penumbra Overture, which was based off of a tech demo called... called Penumbra. The intent was to make a trilogy of games, with Overture being the first game in that trilogy, uh, but issues with their publisher, Lexicon Entertainment, led to them combining the second and third game into Penumbra Black Plague, released in 2008, and later on... Requiem that was released the same year as an expansion of sorts. Now, I'll be honest, I really like this game. Not necessarily because it's, you know, quote-unquote good or whatever when compared to, like, the lineup of games Frictional has made, uh, but because I just kind of like seeing where things began. The first iteration of something, the first draft, you know, ideas that weren't fully formed yet, uh, projects that never reached their true potential. This game is the beginning their first commercial attempt at making a horror game that would eventually become the inspiration for so many games that have been released today. But, but is it still worth playing? You know, is it worth it? And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get into the issues. This game is old, to start out with, okay? And some work was needed to make it playable for me. First, I had to turn off almost all the advanced graphics options because the game would get weird if I didn't. Oh no! <laughs> oh, oh no, I'm okay. What the fuck was that? Oh, something's not right. Whoa. Oh, something's not right. Then, after that, I needed to fix the random mouse acceleration. Oh yeah, this is one of those old fucking games. You can't get rid of it completely, but you can mitigate it. I'll link the Steam community fix in the description below, but, long story short, one download later, a few button presses, and I was in business. After that, the game ran fine, and I haven't really ran into any major FPS issues or bugs, but, but I kind of feel like I got off lucky, you know? as taking a quick look at the Steam forums gives me an impression that I got off easy. So if you plan to play this on modern hardware, just know that your mileage might vary. Another thing to keep in mind is that the options for this game are limited when compared to more modern titles. I mean, the year was 2007. Not all games got the multiple pages of graphical settings, you know? I don't know, man. Could you, could you at least have given me more sound sliders instead of just one? sound slider. With that out of the way, let's get into the game. For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it, so when he sent me a letter a few days after mom's funeral, it was the first I'd ever heard from him. Pity he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing, which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went, as he knew I would. I discovered that despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago, and said so the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and 
my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever taken. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realised my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day, and I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on a chartered boat, beginning the 12 hour journey that would lead me into my past. Alright, now that that nerd's done talking, let me give you the short version of what you just saw. The game stars you, Philip Buchanan, an English physicist who got a letter from his supposedly dead father shortly after his mother's funeral. Neat. The letter tells you to go collect the contents of a lockbox. The contents of that lockbox were a collection of notes, most of it unintelligible, except for some parts which show the location of something in uninhabited Greenland. For those with common sense, that's the one covered in ice, not the one covered in... green... In the letter, your father told you to burn all the documents, notes, maps, etc., but you're too curious to do that. And instead, you plot a course for Greenland, and set out into the snow to find out what's going on and what your father was doing after all this time. Shit, with no drums at all. You know what I mean? It's just, just how I'm feeling. Alright, let's get into the visuals. The visuals in this game are... okay. Okay, look. I don't know how to judge this game's, you know, graphics, visuals, whatever you want to call it, for two main reasons. Reason one, as I've said before, I don't really care what a game looks like. As long as the game is fun to play, I could be staring at pixels for all I care. And reason two, this came out in 2007, and yes, while some games that came out around this time period have better style and overall, you know, graphic fidelity. At the time, Frictional was just a four-man team working remotely all across Europe. And also keep in mind that to play this game, I had to turn down a lot of these settings to actually get the game running right. So for the sake of my own sanity and not sounding too mean to a game that came out over 16 years ago, Jesus fuck, it'd be able to drive now. I'll say that the game doesn't look terrible, the lighting, while not the best, does look good, and visually speaking, I was never really like, you know, what the fuck am I looking at? Although there were moments where the animations would kind of get a bit janky, you know what I mean? <laughs> and although you're stuck in a bunker for the entire game, the environments are still fairly varied. Uh, I never really got lost or confused as to where I was either. Not only does every area have a map, but there are multiple maps per area, so no matter where you are, you can easily find your way around, with a map being pretty close to you almost at all times. And speaking of the, you know, areas, it feels like I'm actually progressing deeper and deeper into this place, you know? At first you're in this sort of decrepit mine shaft that was made into like a makeshift bunker. Then you're greeted with a kind of cleaner facility that seems to have been doing some like real shady shit. Then you're met with this brutal, rusty, fucking tetanus ridden area. I just like the changes in scenery, and it feels as though you're going deeper and deeper into this dreadful place and getting further and further from safety that was the entrance. So, I like it. Good job. Big pieces. Only big pieces. I can only jump. Big pieces. Fish? That, just, that distracted me so much. That distracted, that distracted me so much seeing the fucking fish down there. God damn it. Push and crack like we invented it. Chef Cool Louie Rupert Duffel got In every review I've made about frictional titles, I've always said that these games have great sound. This one, however. Well, let me be clear. The sound is still good, and I think that most of its problems just stem from it being their first go at this. For example, in this voiceover, you can kind of tell that someone wasn't in a, you know, recording 
room, if you understand my meaning. The room wasn't really made to record in it. You could sort of hear the background in his voiceover. Beginning the 12 hour journey that would lead me into my past. That would lead me into my past. You see what I mean? And then there's also no sound settings. To be fair, the sound mixing that they have done is okay. Nothing blew my ears out except for the intro music mixed with rain, but to be fair, most other games have a loud as fuck intro, so they get a pass for that. But I do think that some of the sounds are just a little too loud, you know, just a teensy bit. Uh, for example, like this beeping that you have to listen to for a puzzle. And sometimes I felt as though the music was just a bit too loud, but that might just be me. Speaking of the music, um, I think it's pretty good. Uh, although there were some tracks that kind of played repeatedly, you know, which were kind of a little, you know, it, it was just a little weird hearing the same tracks over and over again, but those were like the enemy, like the monster tracks, so that kind of makes sense because the music shows up when they show up, but otherwise, I think it's pretty good, and you can kind of hear what would lead into the Dark Descent's music, if you understand what I mean. I don't know, maybe maybe it's just me hearing this, but uh, let me know what you think. But they are distinct. Uh, like I know that this music means that a dog is near. I know that this music means that spiders are chasing me. And I know that this music means I'm gonna have to turn around and bash a dog's head in with a hammer. Hey yo, what up dog? Get fucked! Bitch, 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 get fucked! See, the tricky thing with sound design is that most people probably won't really notice it. When it comes to sound design, unless you're doing a bad job, people won't really pay it too much mind. So, considering that even today, the sound holds up relatively well, and it was made by like four people 16 years ago, uh, good job, next time you'll know what not to do. Don't turn that dial now. Second board. Boom. Shit! Alright, gameplay, the meat and potatoes. So, if you've ever played a frictional game, uh, game, this will feel familiar, albeit a bit less refined. Most things control about the same, except for well, one of the main things that these games are known for, the interactions. It's still mostly the same, and it's not bad, but how do I put this? It's just not there yet, you know? It's probably better to feel it for yourself, but whenever, like, for example, I needed to turn a valve, I felt like my mouse pad just wasn't big enough, you know? Which ends up making me slower, which means... I don't think I'm gonna make it. This is fucking difficult. My mouse pad's not big enough! <laughs> Well, uh, just know that the mouse movement stuff isn't as refined as the later games are. Uh, if you want a comparison, think of the first PlayStation 4 Spider-Man compared to Spider-Man Miles Morales, you know? It's still good, and it's neat and all, especially for the time, but it's just not as refined as the later games are. Also, the mouse acceleration probably didn't help, but what do I know? Another thing this game has that the other games don't, well, except for... I suppose bunker is combat with hammers oh and the pickaxe but you're mostly going to be using the hammer the combat in this game is unreliable and clunky and that's not necessarily a bad thing on paper a lot of horror games have this issue where uh you know you're in a horrifying setting but you're given like a gun or a weapon to use and while that can still lead to some tense moments like uh, for example when you run out of ammo or if you're faced with overwhelming numbers but have a limited amount of bullets in your magazine these games just 
aren't as tense for me though, as I can, you know, fight back. And sometimes it isn't really that hard to fight back. Keep in mind, I'm the kind of player that will stockpile and hoard just about every resource because I might need it eventually. Of course, that moment never really comes. So whenever I'm put in a bad spot in these games, I can usually get out with little to no effort so long as I can aim. But here, your combat isn't really all that effective. Sure, you could bash a dog's head in with a hammer, but you better get as far away from him as possible, because when he wakes up, he will be pissed and he will call for backup. Fuck you. Me. What did I do? One dog hey, can I can handle, but two, that's a problem. Well, Not to mention, it's better. really hard to control the thing. See, the way it works is you have to hold the mouse button and then move your mouse to swing in the direction you want to swing it. You could swing from right to left and hell, you can even do a jab. But the caveat here is that you can't really look around when you do this. Sorry, sorry, uh, correction, you can hold right click to look around, but then you can't swing until you let go of the right mouse button and make the swinging Nothing motion with your mouse. Nothing works the way you think it does. Oh my god! Damn. But then again, you can't really, you know, kill the dogs, reliably anyway. There is a steam room that you can lock them in in the later levels that lets you... Okay, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It looks like you're gassing them, but I promise you it's steam. It does kill them until you load the area again. Then it just respawns and you'll have to do the same song and dance to get them in there. And gas them. But you don't really need to do these things. Let me back up real quick and say that there are two enemies in Overture. You have the dogs, and you have the spiders. The spiders are mostly saved for time puzzles, and are never really patrolling an area. Wrong way. Well, save for one. Oh, fucking shoot you, motherfucker! I juked him! I got out of the way! I juked him! I juked Oh, you want some of this? You want some of this? Oh, you can't handle this! You can't handle my fucking style, bro! Uh, so most of the time, while collecting the pieces of a puzzle, you'll be harassed by the dogs, and I'll be honest, I don't think they know where they are half the time. The way that the dogs work is that they won't give chase immediately, or even be interested in you if they only see you for a couple seconds. The only way they give chase is if you stand in their line of sight for, like, five seconds around there. They're more territorial than they are aggressive, and... Wait, have I just been beating up regular dogs? Oh, man. Anyway, I just found it really easy to run past them, you know? Uh, not that you can't just play the game like a normal person. You can, and it's easier than what I did for a majority of the game. You can even lure them away with bottles of beef jerky. Uh, but I'm gonna be honest, it's just really fun to hit dogs over the head with a hammer and break things as, uh, over their head as well. Uh, you know, it's just it's just fun, okay? And I don't have to explain myself. I'm not a psychopath, stop yelling at me! But apart from running away from those pesky dogs, you'll mostly be solving puzzles. Okay, so and they're not me, half bad right? for their first go at things. Right. Some of them had me genuinely thinking outside the box. Uh, None of them were really all that hard or too easy, Wait. so long as you pay attention. E? FD? Okay, I just, I literally just guessed it. 
editing wormwood here uh so i was having trouble with this chemical puzzle and i'm actually kind of embarrassed to say that i figured out this uh during editing uh i was reading some of the note uh clips and i kind of just guessed the puzzle the chemical puzzle right uh you're supposed to use this note that you find in the same room and you'll kind of notice in the note uh, in the second page that these words have a capital I or like they're all capitalized and so like you see like the beginning like B you know A you know yeah I, I just didn't notice that I'm kind of just dumb sometimes Fine. editing editing wormwood here it's like five in the morning um no yeah yeah that just doesn't it doesn't work get whatever he said it doesn't work I went back to get more clips and I tried the th that piece of paper, the, the solution that it was, and it just... I think it's just random, I think. <sighs> I'm tired. Okay, I have no clue how the fucking chemical puzzle works. Whatever. Oh, so many pills. Right, I can't just whip it around like that. But then again, it has been a long time since I've played this, so I kind of just forgot most of the solutions to them. But enough about me, let's talk about you. And you have some tools at your disposal. Flares, when you need to light up an area. Beef jerky to lure dogs into the gas chamber. Dynamite. I didn't use this very much. It, it just didn't work. Turn on the light at the end, getting in the middle of the tunnel. But some things remain shrouded in darkness. My warranty message I hope has helped, but what you need now is to the wall hole to the right of the fence. Oh, go now. There is no time to explain. Dog's not dead. Dog's not dead. Dog is not dead. Dog is not dead. Dog is not dead. Dog is not dead. Painkillers to heal you, and uh... W wait a minute, are these expired? Your trusty glow stick that never runs out, and of course your flashlight. Your flashlight uses batteries to fuel it. By the way, you don't actually collect the batteries into your inventory for later use, like the next game. They just immediately go into your flashlight when you pick them up. So keep that in mind when you start mindlessly picking up items uh, that you might be wasting some flashlight juice. There are a couple of mechanics that aren't realized fully. Like for example, the panic mechanic. Hey, that rhymes. To put it simply, your character has a panic attack when he looks at enemies for too long. Wait a second. Yeah, so this is a very early attempt at trying to stop you from looking at the monster. Uh, if you look at the dogs long enough, you'll start to hyperventilate, your vision gets blurry, then you'll stand up. From fear. A nice idea, uh, but there's one problem. It, uh, it doesn't work. Sorry, sorry. Let me correct myself again. It does technically work when you're not moving. See, if you move while looking at the monster, you're immune to the panic effects. So you're always immune to the panic effects. There's never a situation where I was just standing still, uh, not wanting to move. You know, I was always on the move trying it. to get it's past haunted. the, you know, the dogs. So, Basically. you know, it just didn't really work the way it was intended to. Okay. So, yeah, like I said, um, uh, good idea doesn't really guys. work in practice. Sometimes it's best to keep your mouth closed, you see. Overall, uh, I think this is a fun game. Uh, albeit a bit, it is a bit short. I read a review that was released around the time that the game was published. Um, and they said that it took them like about five to six hours to beat. It took me like less than two. Maybe I'm just a pro gamer, but don't go into this expecting a long experience. Then again, the game is like $10, so yeah, I think it's a fair price. After all, you get to meet Red. And nothing bad happens to Red. Red. It's not my name, you understand, but, but I am sure you will agree. It is a name rather similar to a cardigan. Fetching with one correctly. Ah, my memory is like something with a great many small holes. We shall be needing to perform some minor demolition work so that we might one day meet again. Far as my eye is seen, our rocky grave extends, and yet you cast away my hope like you would a puppy, freshly rolled in its own feces. 
It's really nice and interesting seeing where Frictional got started, and I can't wait to take a look at Black Plague. And honestly, compared to the rest of Frictional's titles, this was a nice change in setting. More modern setting than, you know, the past that I've been kind of stuck in for the past couple of months. I'm kind of interested in seeing Soma, because I think that takes place in the future. Uh, but anyways, uh, that's all from me. Uh, as always, I'll see you next time.